Hey everyone, Mr. Merriman here. Just wanted to give you kind of a, a quick final lecture, if you will, and a reflection for Chinua Achebe's Things Fall Apart. This is not the way we had envisioned finishing this novel. I would have given you another major summative writing assignment with this novel, but alas, that was not to be. So I think some of you might have questions in relationship to how the novel ends, and I don't blame you. We're going to get to that in a second, but I just wanted to cover some points briefly and then go on with it. All right. First off, Okonkwo is a tragic hero. This is a tragedy. This is the downfall of a guy who was prominent in this Evo culture, and then he has a massive downfall, apparently. And every tragic hero is going to have a tragic flaw, and his tragic flaw is that he can't get past this perceived masculinity that he has and how everyone should act. And when his, he realizes that the tribes won't go to war with the white man, then he just takes his own life, which ironically some people think is not masculine, that it's kind of cowardly to take your own life. He may be taking his own life though, out of disgust for what he perceives to be unmasculine traits of the society around him. And then he takes his own life. I'm going to get to back to Okonkwo in a second. I do want to talk about points that some of you made, and it was well said, how some of the advancements from the white civilization and those coming from England are actually beneficial, and they are. Mr. Brown, his last name is Brown for a reason. It's not just because it's an easy name. It's because Brown is in the middle of black and white. And what he's trying to do is meet the Igbo culture and wolfia and the like he's trying to meet them all halfway and by doing that it's not that he agrees with them especially in terms of religion but he offers advancements such as medicine and school to try to win them over which is not the worst thing in the world if you think about it but then when he passes then things start to go downhill things become more aggressive and that sort of idea so just be mindful of that fact too but i'm sure a lot of you have questions about the ending of the story and with good reason. I think it's one of the most jaw-dropping endings to any story I've ever read because it is so unorthodox. And, you know, lots of times with creative writing, you know, this would be a practice that a college professor would not encourage a writer to try. It's a risk to have the point of view not shift to someone who's had a, a major presence in the story like Orika, um, or Enzima, or even Nuoye, if you will, even though he's been exiled, he does it with this character we know very little about, this district commissioner. And all of a sudden, he's running the show. We're seeing the story from his point of view, but there's a reason why. And the reason is, <laughs> he sees Okonkwo, and he sees him hanging, and Obirika is crestfallen and devastated, which shows how close of a friend he was to Okonkwo, but then at the end, we have this district commissioner just look at Okonkwo's dangling body from the tree. And he said, the story of this man who had killed a messenger and hanged himself would make interesting reading. One could almost write a whole chapter on him. Perhaps not a whole chapter, but a reasonable paragraph. At any rate, there was so much else to include, and one must be firm in cutting out details. He had already chosen the title of the book after much thought. The Pacification of the Primitive Tribes of the Lower Niger. This is an incredible ending because it does something that's important. And this is part of the reason why Chinua wrote this story. So you have a story, The Pacification of the Primitive Tribes of the Lower Niger. Primitive tribes just, just means that they don't really think highly of these individuals. They look at them as just kind of specimen, if you will, that you're looking at for an experiment, maybe even animals. Primitive is the, that giveaway. And they just come from the lower Niger, not their culture, not in Wolfia, not elsewhere. They just look at them as primitives, as savages who don't have a story. And that couldn't be further from the truth. This culture is civilized. It's civilized in different ways we did not expect, maybe ways we don't agree with, but there's still structure. There's still a system of government, even. There are practices that they practice. It's not just a free-for-all where these individuals fight each other or do stupid stuff all day. There's a real civilized society that we've been exposed to in this story. But more importantly, 
you don't have to like Okonkwo. He is not a likable guy. But at the end of the day, as a parent with this story, Okonkwo has a story of his own to share. That he has a background. That he is a torn individual who is conflicted on so many levels. And the reason that Achebe has the story end with this district commissioner is to show us that none of that will matter. Like I said in a, an earlier YouTube video, history is seldom told from the losers. So anyone who's lost a battle in society, there's a good chance that their practices, that their history has been wiped out completely, as might be the case here. That's why the story ends with this totally off the wall point of view and it really does work uh, quite effectively so that's how the story ends if we were still in class i would have had you write a final new historicism reflection in terms of what this would mean and what new historicists would say they would certainly look at that district commissioner and realize that during queen victoria's reign in the 1890s that these the 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 English who came over wiped out a lot of prominent civilization from these regions in Africa. But even more importantly, if you notice, the book is written, originally it was written in 19, copyright date, published in 1959. So once again, we're entering kind of like the civil rights movement in America and such. And it's so easy for us to look at people who are different, be it a minority group or someone else, and we look at them, and if they're acting differently or the like, we're like, wow, what's wrong with those people? Those people are acting dumb and, and whatever and all this nonsense. And as Mrs. Chernick once told me, you know, everyone has a story. That's the bottom line. Everybody, regardless of where they're coming from, whether they are they're migrants coming, trying to come to America, whether they are people protesting, you know, the current quarantine situation, which I don't agree completely with, but those people have stories. Those migrants have stories. You know, even people who live in the not so desired sections of neighborhoods in Northeast Ohio that we look at, we kind of judge immediately. They have stories to share. And I think what Achebe was trying to show is that everyone has a story if you're willing to listen. And that's kind of the gist of the, the piece. It's an amazing novel. I hope you all are well. On Friday, I really would like to say goodbye to all of you through Google Meet. So if you were able to just jump in and tell me what you're up to, where you're headed, that'll be great. I hope you guys all enjoy your last week of high school. I'll see you soon.